Hello YouTube and welcome to another Windows tutorial. So in this video I will show you some really basic Windows PowerShell commands. So are you ready? Let's get started. So first thing first, let's start our PowerShell. So in order to do that you can just go to your uh, taskbar, search button and hit it and you will search for PowerShell. So me, as you can see, it's here. So I will click on it and I will get this window here. Windows PowerShell, okay? So by default, it's uh, actually located on my home directory here, C users, Amino, okay? So we'll use here just some basic commands just to show you how you can use PowerShell. So the first command that we can use actually is to get the version of PowerShell we are using. And in order to do that, we'll use a variable called PS version table. So every variable must actually begin with the dollar sign. Okay, so I will type the dollar sign PS version table. Okay. So you can see here I'm using PowerShell version 5.1.20,000 or 22,000, okay? And the addition here is the desktop, okay? So another thing that you can do if you want to get actually the version of uh, PowerShell is just after this uh, variable you type PS version Okay, and this time you will get just the major manner and the built version of the PowerShell. So you can use whatever command you want. Okay, so let me clear that. One important thing that you can do also is where you are or the equivalent of Linux payment print working directory. So in order to get the location where you are, so here it's obvious we are in the C directory, users, amino. But if you want to get it from the command, you can just type the command get location. So here we go. You see now the path to, to where you are right now. So we are in C users, amino directory. Okay. You can also change the directory if you want. So let's say that you want to move to the T directory, for example. So for me, let's uh, let's say that I want to go to the T directory to a folder called, for example, Fortinet. I can use the command set location. And here, all I have to provide is the path to the directory where I want to be. So for example, me, I want to be in this directory here, D40Net, okay? Here we go, so you can see that the prompt has changed and now I am on the D40Net directory. I can, of course, verify that using the previous command, get location. Here we go, you see the path now is the D40Net. Okay, let's move on. You can also get the local users that you have in your PC with this command, get local user. Okay, so you can see now we have a bunch of uh, users. We have administrator, we have Amino, which is enabled. We have a default account, we have a guest account, and here WD GUI utility account also. So here you, you see if this account is enabled, true or false, and the description of this account. Okay. Another useful command is if you want to get the date. So it's obvious get date. Here we go. We are on Saturday, April 30, 2022. Okay, and you also get the time by the way. Okay, if you want to see also the time zone, 
also the command is obvious get time zone just easy as that so here you can see the ID of the time zone and uh, the difference between the UTC okay here we go another useful command that you use a lot is the equivalent of the dire command so of course in Windows PowerShell you can still use the Windows command that you used to be like the dire command for example which lists all the files and the directories in the current directory so here you can see that I have a directory called 14.8 full courses and also I have a file which is .tar.gz okay so the equivalent of this command when you are using PowerShell is get child item so actually this dire is an alias of this get child item command but I will show you how you can see that very quickly now so you can get the same output when you are using this command get child item here we go so you can see here we have the same output as the dire command but one important thing here with this die get child item that you can use actually parameters so for example if I want to show just directories I will add here a parameter directory okay so now you can see I get only a directory which called 14 at 4 courses okay if you want to get only files you have actually to uh, replace this directory by the keyword file so now I only get the zip file .tar.gz okay so there are many many parameters that you can use with the get child item but here we'll just go step by step okay some also useful command that you can use is the equivalent of the echo command so as you know the echo command just display text in the current output so you can use write host write host command just to display some text and here you can use the text between uh, quotes if you want or you must actually use between single quote or double quotes so here let's use double quotes for example I will just show hello world here we go and you can see I get what I have entered here in the output there is also a command that can be used to read the input from the user and the name is just read host and also between quotes we can actually write our question or wh what we want to ask the user for example what's your name what's your name okay so here you can see that I get a prompt for entering my name so I'll just I mean here we go so these two commands are pretty useful when you're using scripts for example okay so let's move on and now let's see some uh, system commands for example if you want to see all the processes that are running in your system you can use this get process so get process will show you all the processes running in your system so you can see that I have now a bunch a bunch of processes that are running on my machine I have Chrome browser I have some agent and have audio I have Camtasia which helped me to record this video so with this command here get process it shows me all the processes that are running on my system with their ID or CPU time and the memory time and so on I can also use it with another 
actually command in order to filter something so let's say for example I want just to display the ID and for example let's say the name or process name okay so I want just just these two columns here ID and process name so I can use the same command but I will this time redirect the output to another command so we'll using here this bar here and I will be using another command format table and I will give it some property I want just the process name process name and for example the ID here I mistyped this property here so you have to write it correctly so here let's write it correctly see its property here we go so you can see now that I have only these two columns which are the process name and ID so with the help of this format table you can get filter to your output okay and now as I told you before when I, when I have used the dire it was just an alias of the get child item because they have both the same output so in order to see all the aliases that we have here in PowerShell we can use the command get alias so here you can see all the aliases in your system and let's search for the dire command here we go so you can here see the dire command is actually the get child item so you can see also the CP is the copy item so you can take a look of all these aliases in order to see what they are related to but you can also create your own so remember when you use the command get date it will show you the the time and date so let's say that I want to make my own actually alias so instead of typing get date I, I want just to type DT so DT doesn't exist so let's create actually an alias for it so I'll use the command here set alias okay and here the command so it's get or the name of the alias first so I will call it DT and here the command or commandlet that we can use in our in PowerShell so in this example I will use get date here we go so now I have created alias DT so instead of typing get date I will just type DT and I will get the same result so it's pretty interesting to work also with aliases okay and if you want to get the definition let's say that you forget what this alias refers to you can use get alias with the parameter here definition definition and here the get date for example in order to see the alias that we have created for the get date okay we can use the same for example for get child item of course it will show us the dire command so actually here we have three we have dire we have gci and list so list also is alias for get child item okay and finally I will show, show you how just to redirect output to a file so it's pretty simple so let's say that you want for example to redirect the output of this command here to a file so for example get date I want to redirect this not to this standard output but to a file so it's simply you have to redirect it using the bar here 
simple to file but here you have to use another command out file then you can put it whatever you want between quotes so let's put it in C drive and I will name it just uh, for example output txt okay here we get an error access to the path is denied so we have actually to use it to use PowerShell with administrative privileges so let's run PowerShell but this time with admin privileges so I go to my search here bar or type PowerShell but I will right click on it and I will hit just uh, run as administrator okay here we go so now I have run with administrator privileges so let's use the same command get date and I will redirect the output to C output .txt file so now I have no error so let's move on to the C drive and see if this file output.txt exists so as I told you I can use the set location to change the location so I will go to my C drive here here we go so let's use the get child item and I will use the parameter here just uh, to show files here I mistype child and I here as you can see I have my file here output.txt that has been created so that was just a brief introduction and some basic commands or commandlets that you can use when you are using PowerShell. As always, I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.